You know what I've always noticed while walking through the breezeways? What is it? Our garden. Tori, Lois, Gianna, and Adam went to talk to Miss Fagan about it. What's up, Woodstock? Did you know that there was a garden in the breezeway? If not, you do now. This garden was started to teach students more about how to grow their own food and pollinate plants. So we spoke with Miss Fagan to tell us more about how the edible garden works along with the pollination garden. Hi, I am Ms. Fagan and I teach the Food and Nutrition Wellness Pathway classes here at Woodstock High School. I'm in room 303 if you ever need to see me. Have three edible gardens behind us, which means that we've planted plants that we get to eat and harvest. So we have cucumbers, we have eggplant, um, we tried sugar, sugar snap peas and green beans this summer. Um, in the planting seasons, we're using them in the classrooms to show the students how we started from seed all the way to, you know, now we're harvesting it and using it in a cooking lab. I started the garden just to kind of, I went to a conference basically and everyone was pushing like farm to table, farm to table and it was funny because some of the students didn't even realize where our food was coming from. They always thought it was the grocery store or the refrigerator section um, of the grocery store. So it was my um, motivation to say, okay, we really need to show where our food is coming from because there's hardworking people out there that are making this happen and the kids really need to know that and appreciate that. So that's kind of why we started the garden. And don't think I did it by myself. I've asked other people from our department to help, which they did. Um, they helped build the gardens. We kind of worked together. Um, I got the students involved to help. So it's, you know, it wasn't just me alone. So um, we also started our pollination gardens. So if you haven't noticed, um, I welcome you to walk through our pollination side of our garden which is kind of on the opposite side there um, where we have wildflowers growing we have art um, being displayed um, again a lot of the departments from in Woodstock High School are helping out and they have suggestions and I'm open to them so please if you have an idea of what we can add to our pollination garden I would love it um, other departments are helping out so the art department if you haven't noticed please come out and kind of view what they've done um, let us know, try to make this place beautiful. So we'll hope to hear from you. Today about uh, Woodstock High School's gardens. Thank you to Miss Fagan for explaining all of this and feel free to check out classroom 303 for more information on our classes. Back to you anchors. Wow, that makes me want to grow my own garden at home. Why grow one at home when we have an amazing one at the school? Did you know butterflies can actually eat humans? Uh, Brooke, that's a wrong answer. Speaking of wrong answers, Ella and Gianna went around to see what you guys had to say. Good morning, Woodstock. I'm Ella, and I went around asking y'all some questions, but wrong answers only. What are your favorite pizza toppings? I'm going to have to say probably pineapple. Uh, uh, pineapple. Glass shards, for sure. Um, who's your favorite music artist? Honestly, I'm going to have to say Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, I feel like Little Nas X. Is Adam Zemecki a ginger? Yes, yes, yes. He yes. Is not blonde at all. <laughs> Yeah, if I had to order a pizza, I'd order extra onions. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time, Woodstock. Looks like you guys got all of those wrong. Since all of those are wrong, here's a true fact. It's actually Hispanic Heritage Month. Heidi made a video showing y'all what it's all about. During National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th, the U.S. government celebrates the countless contributions of more than 60 million Hispanic Americans, Latinos, Latinas, and Latinx, identifying people to our culture and society. Hispanic Americans are the largest minority group in the United States today. Generations of Hispanic have constantly helped make our country strong and prosperous. They contributed to our nations beyond description. Hispanic Americans embody the best of our American values, including commitment to faith, family, and country. The Hispanic American community has a, left an incredible mark on our government, culture, and economy. Wow, Heidi did a really great job with that video. It's nice to see that we have a whole month recognizing such important people. Another important thing happening this month is Suicide Prevention Month. Tori made a very informational video highlighting just that. 
As some of you may know, September is Suicide Awareness Month, and I just want to let everyone know that it's okay to not be okay, and that there's many resources for you if you need help. Counselors, family, and even friends. So this, let this be a reminder that you're loved and needed. Tori did a great job on displaying mental health. I agree. Mental health is a serious matter that should be taken seriously. Mental health is not a red flag. Haley, do you know any? I don't know of any, but you guys certainly seem to. Roll the clip. Hey Woodstock, I'm Brooke. And I'm Haley, and we went around to see your biggest red flags. What's the biggest red flag in someone? Whenever they uh, got AirPods. If they're like, if they're like too toxic or if they like to argue a lot. If they're ugly. What is your biggest red flag? Um, probably if somebody's a bad driver. When they listen to the radio in their car. Uh, when she's touchy with other dudes. When they sleep in socks. What's the biggest red flag in someone? If they're blonde. Thank you. Wow, those are some pretty interesting red flags. Make sure to avoid people like that. I'm Brooke. And I'm Haley. Back to the anchors. It kind of seems like some of those were personal. Yeah, blondes are definitely a red flag. Since we're on the topic of flags, you know who holds our flags? Who? ROTC. Here's a video about them. Hey, how are you doing today? My name is Gunnery Sergeant Keith Mark. I'm the United States Marine Corps retired. Today I'm talking to you about some of the programs that we offer inside Woodstock and JRTC. Uh, classes. From the moment you join NJROTC, we start teaching you about the history of America and our curriculum covers the history of NJROTC, the Navy, history of the government as a whole, and they learn about things that the uh, Navy is very proud of, like their planes, their submarines, and their ships. The second year, we talk about such things as voltage and wattage and stuff like that. Third year, more ballistics and the JAG, which is Judge Advocate General, meaning that you learn about the laws of the military. The fourth year is leadership. It's a strong focus on making you a better leader while you are actually in charge of the lower classes. Our schedule uh, is normally a set schedule. On Mondays, we do drill where we go outside and we march along, maybe unarmed, sometimes armed. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do academics, where you learn about uh, the processes of the Navy. On Wednesdays, we are, we're in uniform, we do a uniform inspection. That is a gradable event. Fridays, we do PT, just like your regular physical education class, uh, but we try to throw a Navy spin on it. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, please stop by 311 and let me know. Those ROTC kids really show their spirit in wearing those uniforms. Speaking of spirit, Spirit Week is next week. Lois and Ian made a video about Spirit Week. Good morning, let's talk. My name is Lois Juma, and today I'm here with W27 to tell you all about our Spirit Week that's coming up from October 2nd to October 6th, which means October 7th on Saturday is our homecoming dance. On Monday is Wear Your Best Flannel. On Tuesday is Backers vs. Surfers. On Wednesday is Are You Team Barbie or Team Oppenheimer? On Thursday is Go Minions. And then on Friday is Disco Inferno, which means our dance is Disco. Thank you, let's talk, and back to you, anchors. I know I'm going to dress up for Spirit Week. How about you, Brooke? Oh, you know I am. You know another way to show school spirit is by donating to the food pantry? We have a food pantry? Of course we do. Natalie, Trent, and Jake made a video to show y'all what it's all about. Did you know there is a food pantry at Woodstock High School? Today we went to talk to Coach Logan to find out more about it. Okay, so the food pantry here at Woodstock High School is set up to help families in need not only at Woodstock High School, but at Woodstock Middle School and elementary schools that feed to Woodstock High School. And we're able to help people in need. If you're wondering how to donate, here's where you should go. Uh, there's a barrel in the front office that it's not a trash can, it's set up for food to be dropped off. We can always use breakfast items, granola bars, um, uh, canned meat is always good, tuna fish, Vienna sausage, uh, stuff like that is always very helpful for us. Lastly, students should know that they can donate more than just food to the pantry. We do also provide clothing for families in need. Uh, as the winter gets closer, coats are always appreciated, different sizes, uh, socks, deodorant, toothbrushes, toothpaste are always welcome items in the food pantry. Thank you to Coach Logan and Ms. Draper for having us and telling us more about the food pantry. Now back to the anchors. 
Now everyone can donate to our food pantry. I know, I'm going to. Well, unfortunately, it looks like this broadcast has come to an end. I'm Haley. And I'm Brooke. Make, Make it, it a great, great day, Woodstock. Woodstock.